Hi, just to introduce myself, I'm Gail Valencia. I'm leading our artificial intelligence group here in Everest UK. Been working in the company for 18 years now and always around the data analytics domain. You know? And I think this is a, it's a passionate uh, era that we're living on with this change on how we're evolving and converging into these t new technologies. Us being system integrators, we always say that we have to like, try to dehype it because there's a lot of hype around AI, too much, everybody's talking about it. Everything is AI, everything is AI. I really probably sometimes, I even hate the word, no, just to use AI. It's around how the way that we see it is the way that we can apply these techniques to our IT transformation initiatives at the end. It's as simple as that. It is a journey, it is happening. We have our digital natives, the Googles, the Facebooks, the Amazons, the Microsoft. They're leading the, the, the way or the path, and then we have to come and try to then put it into our into our IT way of doing things. So today, we're gonna to talk a, lot, a little bit about our vision, how we see AI, how we've been doing it within our organization. We started our AI group three and a half years ago, so we're not, we're still quite young, and, and there's still a lot of room for, for improvement. We're gonna talk a little bit about the use cases that we're applying today. These are enterprise-ready, production-ready use cases, because it's not about POCs, it's about talking about scenarios where we're using this technology. Um, Luis then is gonna walk us through so what, what we've done within LifeRay with a, with a demo, which is the, the focus of today, and then a little bit about our history. So this is the agenda, so let's start. So the reality, we said before, it's a trend. Sorry, I don't wanna hear a beat. We do have scenarios that have changed it, and you've probably heard about the AI winters, know how this started in the 50s, with all the mathematical models, and then it stopped, and then there's been sort of like accelerations and decelerations, but it is true that during the last 10 years, we have the adoption of the cloud, the adoption of big data on the Hadoop ecosystem, uh, the implementation and rollout of AIT, so it's a world of data, it's a reality, and it's, it's, we're able to do things that we couldn't do before. Just to give you a scenario, in my, in my personal experience, so 10 years ago, we had this massive Teradata machine to process one million records, it took the whole night. Today, to process one million records, it does it in 15 minutes with the power of the cloud. So that is, that is a reality, but then the way that we see it is that we also have to understand that there's a, there's a thesis on how you apply it, like I, what I said at the beginning. We have to think that this is not just AI for the sake of AI. We, or most of you, are IT practitioners. You work thinking of the business, and that it can have a business impact, is how can we use this technology that it can actually enable us to do things better, to optimize, to do use cases that before were very difficult or very expensive to do, going back to the Teradata example. We have our own internal framework. It's, there's not a lot of detail. At the end, we'll see a little bit there with more detail where we believe that there's an internal transformation and external transformation. If we don't change internally in how we operate and how we tackle this famous, again, hype word of digital transformation, it will be very difficult to do it for front-facing clients or for, the, or for the external world. So transformation has to be both internal and external. And that is a call to action. And we do believe that it's the time is now that, are, that if we don't really adopt these new techniques and these new technologies, we're going to fall behind. We're seeing, we all know the stories, not even of the startups, you know, the upstarts, the, the Ubers, the, Airbnb, the Airbnbs who have broken the industries in five years, broken, totally broken, no? If you think what Airbnb or Uber have done, and their code base and their technical stack is heavily, they're heavily using techniques of machine learning. So it is a call to action. That doesn't mean that we have to go super unorganized and unstructured. We still have to maintain our IT foundation around it, but we do have to start tackling. So if many of you, so how many of you are starting to use AI techniques within your IT organization? Raise your hand. Okay, so for us, we do believe it's a call to action. As I said before, we've only been this for three years now. We're starting to do many things. It's not widely adopted, and when we talk, and many clients are always asking us, like, what is the journey? What is it that I have to do to, to embark in this journey? So it's, so it's, it's okay, but it is a call to action, because it, it, is, it is my perspective. So I've been working 18 or 19 years, and it is changing the way that, that I've been that we're, the way that we're building things, totally different. It's a total different uh, game. From that perspective, what should this AI journey have? So we, we, we like to put here the drone as an example. 
where we think the competition of the algorithm. Algorithm, we talk about algorithm, and there's a lot of overlaps on, on if a linear regression is part of AI or not, or if the stochastic predictive models is part of AI or not. I think it's not about this discussion, it's the new techniques, but it is around the reusability of these algorithms. At the same time, it's to apply it to a business knowledge. We don't, we're not doing AI because the CIO or the CEO says, well, I have to tick in the agenda AI. No, we're doing AI because we wanna tackle a business problem, we wanna automate a business process, we wanna mine some information and do some predictions, not just for the, for the sake of it. Oops, sorry, let's go back. It's really sensitive. It's around building an ecosystem of cognitive applications. So what is cognitive? When we talk about artificial intelligence, we think about, and, and me and my colleague Luis were discussing the, the collaterals of using a rule but are not. So we have to be careful. Artificial intelligence is not the robots. Artificial intelligence is the use of these techniques so we can generate applications that scale, that learn, but, and then that we can interact. So it's also finding that way to impact, to pack it together and group it as a new set of features. No, so before in the past, when we built a data warehouse, the data warehouse was not cognitive. It was just a batch and it showed data. Now a data warehouse can be cognitive because we can learn with the information that is loading and you can modify its technique. And last but not, sorry again, last but not least, the end-to-end -end technology. Let's not forget about that because when we think that we only need to focus on computer vision, no, it's not true, it's computer vision, the way that we are gonna encapsulate computer vision around the APIs, the way that then we're gonna expose these APIs, the way that we're gonna consume them, the way that we're gonna fine tune, it's an end-to-end -end element of all the technology components around it. Now, this slide, the way that we see it, and it's just a simple journey, and this is, this is what we wanted here to convey is that this is what we're actually doing. We're focusing a lot on what is the strategy of implementation within an IT organization, what does we need to change, and especially to tackle the talent shortage that we all face, because there's not a lot of people, like for example, in our organization, we have people that we have retrained from the architecture world into the AI, AI world, from the data analytics world into the AI world, but we don't have a lot of people who've been practitioners of AI for many years, although there are, but it's a difficult, and it is, it is a challenge. The talent shortage is really, is really, really big. So within that A strategy, what we always focus, like we said before, what are the business use cases? What is the journey and what is the model that an IT organization can evolve and adapt to <laughs> tackle AI use cases? We believe in architecture. We believe in the componentization of the solutions and reusability. You build once and reuse. Many of you are familiar. Liferay is a platform of, of compensation, of reusability from an AI perspective. That's also one of our drivers and levers. And let's not forget, it's about enterprise AI. It's not about education. It's not about pet use case. It's about tackling real use case. The other day I had a good discussion around solvency, you know, fam the famous solvency to do process in an insurance company. That's where we have to tackle AI, insolvency, not in, in doing... Um, in doing social mining, because it's also interesting, but there's a real change, and when we think about all these processes that we can change in the way that what can we do around enterprise AI. What we do, we cover elements of advanced analytics, cognitive solutions, and intelligent agents. Which our focus of our core activity is around the advanced analytic piece where we can all the classic, I would say, classic data warehousing, cast classic, management information systems, how those systems will evolve. Cognitive solutions around the new techniques of NLP, speech to text, and mining unstructured data, and then the intelligent agents, so there's a lot of hype around them, there are bots that we interact, but it's, it is a new way that we, that we can change. Another element, uh, another element of our philosophy is the both, it both comes from asset creation, so we've built our own proprietary I would say I would call it AI workbench stack. That what it what it its, obje, its primary objective is to help you in the development of AI use cases. With a, so just to give you an example, if we build a component that has sentiment analysis implemented, the idea would be to make that component reusable and deployable for another developer to come and work for it. So our workbench helps you build these solutions and reuse them. 
It's a quite an interesting, it's quite an interesting uh, approach. We've been recognized by Gartner in this approach, so uh, it, it, is, it is important for us, and we're doing a heavy investment on, on building the asset, although, nevertheless, it's difficult to compete against the, the big boys who have similar tool sets uh, around this ecosystem. Another example of an asset would be, sorry, this is a little bit, goes too fast. It would be our virtual agents, where we, this is just an example of a use case that we've built, our virtual agents architecture that combines elements of digital experience, front end, and then a back end that is interacting and mining, in this case, the, we'll, we'll, look, we'll look at it a bit, a bit later, mining all the interactions that we're having with our customers and then retraining the model to optimize the FAQ model, classic FAQ model of a bot that you, that you interact. This is a production-ready implementation. It's done in Telefonica Brazil. It's getting a million hits a, a month, and it's quite interesting, all the trend and analysis that you can get out of it. So here we see an example of a little bit of more detail of what we've what we built. It's a multi-country in all, so it's multi-country in South America. Um, it has co it's covering both mobile and fixed line uh, systems, so it's, it's quite wide. And the telco here operator, what it wants is to offload uh, customer, customer relationship management and, help, and the help desk and the help centers that are supporting this to reduce it and take them to the internet. The feedback after one year in operation of this that it, the trends that you can, you can find and you can optimize, but it's very important that we also get the human aspect when these elements are moderated and there are some agents who are moderating the, the chatbots and giving yes and no actions to, so if a customer asks questions, the agent might, there's intermediate agents that moderate, validate five possible actions, and the agent clicks, that also is reused to retrain the model. That is really, really relevant for, from that perspective. Here, a little bit of the detail of what we do, and this, from a technical perspective, it's a Watson Microsoft Azure implementation, so it can, it can scale. And then another use case, which I think it's really relevant for us is, it's going really fast, it's this one that we built, sorry guys, that we, let's stop here, that we built for a police department. In essence, this is a, a prototype of finding real-time movements and prediction of the movements of mobile phones. So we're looking for the bad guys, and we want to know, based on history, where a potential group, and they have, and it's quite interesting because they have uh, information that it's, that it's very sensitive around groups of bad guys that they operate and move together, and they're trying to predict their movements in, in real time, and trying to train the different elements with a visualization layer, as you can see there, which is really relevant on, on the way that it goes. Okay, so now, that's our introduction to our vision, really fast on how we believe in LifeRay. As I said before, LifeRay is a platform that we all know and love around content management, portals, extranets. It has a lot of interaction with the people who are the content providers and content managements. So when we, uh, speaking with Luis, speaking with Arnau, when we, uh, this was six months ago, we said, why don't we find scenarios where we can have intelligent algorithms that help automate the interactions as a content management producer in LifeRay. And we said, okay, let's build an extension to LifeRay, a component that it starts, and it's today we're demoing it to, do, to, to you guys, that it starts helping you out with the classification and tagging of images. And not only that, then in the future, we're, we are constantly evolving the platform. It can help you in the evaluation and mining of blog posts. It can help you in the evaluation and mining of search terms. So we have built a production prototype, we'll see it later, that is focused on image classification. What is the overall architecture? So we, I'm a content management provider, I upload my image, I, through the content repository in LifeRay, I validate it, and then I can start using, but what we've added is this feature from request tags all the way to save tags, where we use an AI component that is calling uh, an AI algorithm that uses a computer, vision, a computer vision mining process to find related tags to the images, proposes it to the, to the content moderator, and then the content moderator can actually say, yes, I want to use this tag, or I want to use th this other tag. This the scenario would be for, for image classification. The other one would be for a blog post, or, for example, 
search terms where you you're want to find the classical example that I'm searching for a term. I put marriage, and then I look for content around marriage and wedding, and I'm able to find all those search terms that are correlated or are very close in distance to the search term that we're using. Our architecture, so we have built this new module, which is a moderation component in, in LifeRay, where we interact and it's fully integrated with the UI and look and feel within LifeRay. We get an image component. This image component then is parsed, calls the AI algorithm, the AI algorithm then returns the tags, the, the tags that we can propose. The suggested tags then are moderated and accepted to be, later be reused within, within, the, within the content management features of the, of the platform. The same then can be, can be used for text mining, for example, in a blog post to classify and automate the, automate the component. It's really relevant for us, and this goes back to the vision that this is something new and we don't believe in full automation and we believe that the, there should be a scenario when the user moderates and applies the, the tags. I don't know, have any of you been seen the famous documentary in Netflix, the AlphaGo documentary, when AlphaGo beat the famous Go player? It lost one time. Google thought that it was gonna beat him 5-0. It lost one time. So sometimes you do, find mis you do have mistakes and you do have bugs in your code and you shouldn't fully automate it. You should wait and learn to train. So this, that's from a high level technology perspective. If we think about the component, it's a new component, which is a life rate component. It can be extended, it can be used. Then we have developed our parsing, parsing clients to not break the programming model. We use a TensorFlow library that it's not hosted as a past platform, it's hosted internally within the life rate installation that returns and uh, the image classifier. Potentially you could use other vision APIs, in this case we've used the one for TensorFlow, Google does provide it and open source it, so it's a really good way that you don't have to train that much your, your data set. You have uh, an element to start. A little bit more technicality on, on what it does and, and, the, and the different data flows and pipelines of information. And um, the important part is how we can then retrain this future model. And this is based on the human interaction, and if we have so some of the features that we want to think in the evolution of this component, if we have like really good content moderators, let's focus on how they do the image classification. And those elements are the only ones that we will use to retrain. And if I'm a bad content moderator, let's exclude what Ankel is doing. So we can consider that part of having a little bit social on the retraining of the, of the model. It's a life rate component. We use a proprietary protocol uh, to connect with TensorFlow and it's all hosted in AWS. And Last but not least, let's go with the demo, Luis. All yours. <coughs> You're having a technical issue? Well, why don't yeah. worry. Yeah. Don't worry. We can minutes. we can walk it through. <laughs> philosophy here of the philosophy here of the application. Let's put it here. So we have our classic content management. So this is an element that we're all very familiar with it, where we have our documents and media components. And this is the error that, I, uh, that we have. No, Luis? Yeah. <laughs> Great. <coughs> OK, who's the library expert here? <laughs> You've seen this one before, no? That's the good thing about doing real demos, not putting any videos. Mm 
Okay, we're restarting some. We're restarting the, the the server. So, guys, in the meantime, when we got the demo, the demo is the most interesting part. Now we can use a little bit of question time. If you have any questions on, although we haven't seen the demo, is the interesting part that you might be interested. Over here, guys, that you've been paying a lot of attention. <laughs> Excuse me? IBM Watson API can be used for so we, we're, sense. So from an architecture perspective, if we go back to the slides. Oops. Here. So if we go back to the slides here, we've encapsulated this as a module. So it's a module and it's parsing. So it provides all the different parsers. And in this case, we're using a TensorFlow, the TensorFlow API that out of the box already has an image computer vision classification so we don't have to retrain it. So what Google does and, and many of the other AI vendors, they provide the base component and then you can instantiate it and specialize it for your own needs. Because what we probably imagine that we were doing like super specific ad hoc image classification for bottles or, for example, a use case that we're building right now with a client, it's to recognize mobile phones and cracks in mobile phones. So we need to, rec so we need to on a base data set, then we need to continue specializing, specializing and understand if it's an iPhone, if it's a Samsung 8, if it's a Samsung 9, if it's a Note. So, but you start with the base component. From that perspective, the way that we implement it is from this part here to the left, it's a generic life rate, uh, life rate component. So you can reuse it. But imagine you guys already have uh, a license agreement with IBM or a license agreement with, um, with Microsoft Azure and you want to use their, so you would only have to tackle the implementation side. That's what we said at the beginning, that it's, that it's relevant, that that part needs to be controlled. And so you don't have to do the tie-in. We don't, like we're agnostic, we're, we're only, the only here non-agnostic thing is library and its component. Then we would be agnostic on the solution. Maybe you even want to implement your own life ray, life ray component. Sorry, there was another question over there. So that these libraries are already trained with an initial, uh, the Google library is trained with two million images. So it's already quite advanced. We, you don't have to do that and you can reuse that and reuse those public data sets. That doesn't mean that then from that perspective on, it doesn't maybe tackle your use case and you would need to continue. Based on that instance, you're able to apply and instantiate an instance of that, you specialize it. Like for the example that I've said around using uh, the phone component or using the, um, imagine that you're, it's, it's document management, that you wanna mine invoices, you would probably have to train it with techniques and when you, you get your trained data set, you, you have to give them the, the, the pairs of this is like, for example, imagine you wanna, you wanna find in the image the header of the invoice. You have to give it that information. The open source libraries don't have that, but they do, you already start, you don't start from zero. Or you could start from zero, but then it would be quite intensive. No, the, these, alg these algorithms are already trained, so we, you can reuse them, so that's quite, it's quite positive. Yes, sir. You were talking about solving different problems, so um, would there be other aspects of like life ray or other problems that you might use uh, AI for, like um, for instance, personalization of content? You could, you could. So this is just the, within our life ray domain and, and what we've been building on. This is the first component that we're tackling around image classification. But yes, the, the use case could be about content authoring also, how to optimize content authoring, and content personalization. There's definitely lots of use case around how do you, if you're navigating through the portal and, and you are able to mine your click-through, no, this is the classical, you get the click-through, you mine it, and you're understanding that Angel is always clicking on the commercial products or always kicking on this uh, content specifically, you can then use that to target and mine it. 
The important thing from, from our perspective is going back from a technical point of view, if you do that, we always recommend to use the component model so you don't break the way that, because sometimes a lot of people they're using, they're starting to use these techniques and they do it separately from the technology stack that we already have. We, we have our base platform in Liferay and we have to convey to its rules. We cannot just divert, because then it's super difficult to, to integrate. But there, there's like use cases around, there are, uh, like I said at the beginning, we have scenarios um, where we're doing um, process mining. So imagine big IT systems, you're mining the, all the log files and you're finding irregular patterns when they're jumping different elements. It's very, very technical. Um, the use of techniques, for example, in a, in a bank to determine correlations between weather and use of ATM machines and how to actually forecast the amount of cash that you have in the ATM machines based on the weather and the actual usage of the, of the ATM machine. And in digital, uh, that was, that's one of the core examples that we have in digital. You got it up and running? Finally. Wow, what did you do? Uh, He's an ivory expert. Yeah. You're an ivory expert, great. You rebooted, rebooted uh, the system. I know that, but we have some, some of them. Um, okay, so, sorry guys for this, for this one. You know, this, uh, it's a demo. This, this demo. <clears throat> Let's create a, a specific demo site and then it's easy to, to clear it. Okay, so uh, the idea, as, as Angel was, was explaining, uh, is uh, we have created a specific model for, for the backend for, to, to moderate uh, the, um, the automation of, uh, of tagging in, the, in, in images. The idea is we easily go to uh, to the content management as, as, as it is in, in, in life, right? And just uh, create uh, the image, and then we request the tagging from the AI system. So let's, let's do it. I, I think we can go for, for everything as we started with. So <laughs> we can do it in, in real time. We create the image here. As you can see, it's, you know, I'm going to create a, a, a basic image for, for with this uh, with this pen, and using my my mobile. <clears throat> and then just just create the image, <coughs> and I will load it to the to the system. So uh, here we are, we have this new image in our uh, in documents and media, and then we just go to this module to moderate the tag creation. Okay, so we have here in available images, all the images that we have already uh, uh, uploaded, and this is the action that requests the tagging interaction with the AI uh, system. It's just by clicking, and we have done it. This is connected and get it the, 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 the tags. So we go to, the, to this moderation uh, section. We have all already tag, tagged uh, images and just ask for moderation. And here, what we can see is the, this uh, image we have uh, the system uh, suggested these uh, kind of <laughs> kind of things. Uh, we can see it's something that that's why it's important to retrain <laughs> the system because for them it's uh, I'm I'm wearing a projectile or a missile, so it's not. Uh, but this is all the suggested, and this is also important. This is those uh, tags are already created in our system, so we can know we can separate what tags are already created and maybe in a, in a specific case that can be assigned automatically because we know that we have those tags already created in our system. So uh, just to confirm and moderate the, the tags, we just select them and they are already uh, assigned to as actual tags for this, uh, for this image and that's it. Just select the proper tags, and they are added to the natural and uh, the, the common tagging system in life. Right? 
that are already taxed in life right and the same that all the other tax in the system are already created as new tax in in the system if they were not uh, created like for example <clears throat> if we select one of the suggested they are already added as a tag and are available in the system from this from this moment so as you can see it's a simple it's a simple philosophy but it's quite powerful because the next step is to fully automate it, to fully automate it and have a moderated system where we can, because that, that part of having suggested portal tags that already exist, we're having under control, those are the tags that we, that we trust, those are the tags that are the correct way to, to, to uh, do the management classification of the, of the images, but then we also have offered the possibility of the suggestion, and all within a moderation, a moderation uh, component. Um, Interesting, the missile part, no, so it's the, the technique. It is what it is, and then you have the possibility to extend it and train it and adapt it to the, your specific use case, because maybe uh, some of you guys might have, I don't know, like really important collaterals around uh, creativity or whatever it is that you need specific moderation and training on those elements. So you would need to redo and retrain your algorithm and that model that is based on TensorFlow, applying and retraining, applying and retraining. So, as you can see, going back to the beginning of the session, we don't want to deviate zero from the LifeRay programming model and the LifeRay component model creation. It is a component, it's, it is implemented and it can be reused across many different LifeRay instances. It can be, as you were wisely saying over there, if you don't want the interface to be against a, uh, an on-prem TensorFlow library, you could then abstract it and call somebody something else. But it is very important for us to keep it within the LifeRay, the LifeRay stack and the LifeRay ecosystem. So as you can see, it's a, the look and feel that we're all used to know. And maybe we could try, I don't know, does somebody have a weird object? Maybe we want to do a demo with a weird object. Who has a weird object in their backpack? That one's too difficult. <laughs> More business. Hmm. Let's see if we get that bottle. Okay. Luis, are you up for a challenge for a bottle? That'll be another missile. <laughs> Sorry, sir. So it's a very good demo. I've never seen anything like that. It's very impressive. Precisely the sorts of things that uh, I might be looking at. But um, I guess when you're submitting content, or images, or whatever, to a, uh, a tagging system. Is it that's sort of like a, you know, an influx of content that can happen at any rate, any time, any number of images or documents or whatever, and then that go, then goes through a moderation step. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So there's obviously overhead associated with that. But I'm wondering if it's actually an idea to actually do the tag moderation at the point of consumption. So that basically, if I've gone to a tag and looked for pens and then found a missile, I can say, well, that's not a pen, you know, and you then... Potentially, then you could change. This is the way that we've, that the, in this case, this user journey that we've moderated, but you could change it because, again, we are within that module. It's a life ray model, and you could change the, the, the navigation. But answering your question, being a module, that's what makes it scale because we're within the rules of life ray. So as long as life ray, and we know that life ray scales, we scale with it because it's a really relevant question what you're saying. What happens if we get a lot of peak that, that I don't know, Christmas and they're moderating pre-Christmas and we get a lot of traffic? We are following LIFER rules, so we will grow with them. But yes, it's a valid that you could, you could do a post, a pre-validation that you mine everything and you give it to tags directly and then somebody afterwards goes in. And, but that, that would be just the user, the user experience. I mean, just to ask a very practical question, I mean, is this someone's job to do that? In, in a there level? is, there is, yes, yes. So uh, content moderation, and for example, in one of our biggest customers, they have a dedicated team of 35 portal masters that moderate all the content. Images, and they moderate images, they moderate uh, news, they moderate blog posts, and, they, and since they're getting a lot of collaboration, and so I'm the I'm the mass I'm the I'm moderating all these this community. You're sending me stuff, and it's already tagged, and that's your use case. I don't trust you, and I want to pre-validate it. So it it does happen that moderation. Yes. Well, I, don't know, I just can say it's not even that you don't trust. Well, not person, trust. It's just that you're tr you, you know this is the essential aspect of training the machine. 
but but I don't trust. Like there are, there are scenarios, and we've seen many mistakes that content moderation. Somebody makes a mistake, and is not being uh, it's not being disciplined in the moderation, and you're tagging something, and it's appearing where it shouldn't be, or it's making a mistake. So I think sometimes these at least these mechanisms they help you. They help you, and it's going back to we've talked about at the beginning of the session about ethics in AI. This is not to substitute because we do believe that the content moderator should be there and he should have the last word in saying this is the this is the correct association but it does help you in easing in, in easing it out so what did it what did it get Louise? we get a hand dryer, hand dryer here. wine bottle <laughs> so i Punch think that that's that's why it's important the training because at the end if we are uh, importing a lot of images i, I mean I, i'm thinking about shopping about bottles of, of wine and our water, and saying, okay, let's train the platform to say, okay, I'm not using hair dryers here, so I, I'm using bottles. So, but it's, it's a way to, to train the platform in order to, at the end, in, in, in the future, it will be more automatic uh, as possible, but not. Because we will have, the beauty here is that we will have all this traceability. So there will be a data lineage on all the suggested tags that you're not using. So will be able, and it's different, because this is, this is supervised machine learning. It's not, you, you know that there's two families, supervised and unsupervised. This is supervised, which is more, it's more accurate on the, on the prediction. So all these data streams, was, we'll be telling the algorithm, don't use them anymore, but you will have to retrain and, and churn and create the, the, model, the model again. So it's a practical example production ready implementation of the direction where we feel that it needs to go. Um, when we chose this use case, we, we, we did feel that, because sometimes it's difficult because AI is, is starting to be all over the place, but it's a really good example as we are having the interaction of the human person that is the data feed that the algorithm is then getting to retrain itself. No? It's a very basic example around image tagging. Uh, I don't know if many of you here have done content moderation, but it is it is something that is that if you have if you want to if you want to have a clean portal, you should manage this correctly, and it should be clean, or else it's just a big mess and people don't find stuff. But then, as we said before on the slides, this is for image classification. You could use tags for for uh, mining text documents and and getting the correct tag, which is also really valuable for knowledge management and trying to find the correct direction, and and also for even for usability around search, which is the other use case that we're thinking about on implementing, on helping when I do, when I type in, or I'm getting my suggestion, helping the, the user find the right, the right in, information. How are we on time? We have five minutes, okay. So to wrap up, guys, uh, when we do these things, we don't like to talk about a lot about our company, so, uh, because it's, it's, we're more, we're really passionate around the technology. We're really passionate about doing these things, but of course we belong to a company. Uh, uh, we're part of a big uh, system integrator worldwide, 21,000 strong across the world, and here in London we're 350. Part of our digital experience team is, is here. We, we love the digital side of things. No, it's, it's funny because, uh, uh, um, it has, things are changing in the way that, that we do and we interact and we're more than happy. We're over there at the end and we have our stand. If you have any other questions, we'll be around for, for the rest of the event and thank you so much for your time. If you have any other questions, we can use the last minutes. No, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Really appreciate it.